All right. I want you to turn to page 242 of your Be a Scientist notebook. Today, we are going to do the inquiry activity rate of reaction. I'll read this. You will investigate whether the size of a solid that dissolves in water affects how quickly it will react with water. So here's our materials, safety goggles, this will have to do. This is Alka-Seltzer. Uh, safety first. Two cups. A marker. Graduated cylinder. I don't have one of those available, so I'm going to use the syringe. 200 ml of water, which goes along with our beaker. Index cards two antacid tablets. And because we are investigating how quickly something will react, I'm gonna add something to this materials list. I'm gonna use the timer on my phone. All right, so here we are. Write your hypothesis. Will a whole or a crushed antacid tablet react faster with water? Write a hypothesis using an if-then statement. Pause the video right now and do your hypothesis. All right, this is a simple enough, very straightforward experiment. This is one that you can also do at home. Um, so let me go ahead and read the directions. So we'll read the directions before we get started. Be careful, wear safety goggles. Use caution to avoid spills. So we don't want to make Mrs. Johnson upset, or if you're doing this at home, you don't want to make your parents upset. Number one, label one of the cups whole and the other crushed. So we're just going to do that right now. So whole antacid and a crushed and acid. Pour 100 ml of water into each of the cups. Got a 50 ml syringe. So we do this twice. One. Mill in there. This would have been easier with a graduated cylinder, but got to do what you got to do. 50 mil. That and put this out of the way to avoid spills. All right, fold an index card in half, place one and acid tablet inside the folded card, then close the index card so that the antacid is inside and gently crush the antacid tablet with the bottom of the beaker. Well, I don't like hitting things with glass. I'm about to hit this thing with my glass beaker. You never know. There might be a weak point on the beaker. You might hit it at a specific spot and it shatters everywhere. You don't ever want to hit things with glass. Go ahead and mark that, mark that out of your thing here. That's just not right. Crush the NSA tablet with a bottle. The best thing for you to do is to get something really solid to hit it with. It doesn't have to be something heavy, but you know, you could take like a hammer or um, 
a mallet, a rubber mallet, and you just gently just put it down and do this. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Put it down. Gently crush it. I kid around. Don't hit it with a hammer. Things around the house that you can use to crush this thing. If you have a pestle that's used for, you know, crushing different herbs and everything, that's fine. Uh, rubber mallet is easier also. If you don't have anything like that, a rock is fine and you don't have to hit it with it. You can just roll it and crush it. But I'm trying to have some fun here. All right, so let me put this stuff away. Okay, we are going to put the hole in here and the crushed in here. So, record the data. At the same time, add the crushed tablet to the whole cup and the crushed tablet to the crushed cup. Now. You're going to want to be real observant of this because it's gonna happen very, very quickly. Let's go ahead and make our observations beforehand. This is what the crushed looks like. This is the whole antacid tablet right here. these down for a second. What I'm going to try to do, this is going to be hard to do, but I'll try to, to do it, is I'm going to set up a timer and I'm just going to make a little note down here on my lab thing. Crushed and whole. And I'm gonna to try to determine when the entire thing is finished dissolving in the fluid. So, I'm going to ask my cameraman to come in and get a real tight picture of this. Got a real tight picture of it. Now, I'm going to try to do this at the very same time and then hit start as quickly as possible. So, let me get everything together. And three, two, one. What are you noticing already about the differences between the two?
I've already, I've already made my mark on, uh, with the, the timer on when the, all the whole pieces were gone of this one. With this one right here, if you look, you can see a little white thing over here. Is that part of the tablet, or is that a bunch of little bitty pieces of it still dissolving? Is that bubbles? What is that? See if you can get an overhead shot of these. Notice the droplets around the glass. What is that all about? Okay, I think I'm gonna stop the, the timer. I think all the big pieces are done right here. Wow, that's... That's pretty impressive. All right, I'm gonna give you my raw data. I calculated that it took about 12.97 seconds, so 13 seconds for the crushed to completely dissolve. And the whole took about a minute and we'll just say a minute and 30 seconds. It's one minute, 29 seconds, 0.87. So we'll just call that one and a half for the hull and 13 seconds for the crushed. Now, as we sit here and just kind of let this do whatever it's doing, <clears throat> what I want you to do is I want you to pause this video and I want you to Turn to page 243, and I want you to answer questions one through five. So pause right now, answer those, and when you resume the video, I will go over the answers to this. Okay? Pause. All right, page 243. Let's debrief. Again, the crushed Alka-Seltzer tablet dissolved in approximately 13 seconds. The whole one uh, dissolved in about a minute and 30 seconds. So, number one, which tablet had the stronger or the faster reaction? If you said the crushed one, you were correct. Was your prediction correct? Explain why or why not. This one I'm gonna leave to the very end. So I want you to kind of speculate on why would a crushed tablet actually dissolve faster than the whole. So I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of a hint. It's the same principle as Mentos and Diet Coke. And number three, what type of, of materials could you test the rate of reaction with other matter? Well. Let's see, do you remember my phenomenon video? If not, go back and look at it. Uh, we did vinegar and baking soda. I put a little red food coloring in there and the rate of reaction was very, very fast. So yeah, you could, you could test uh, reactions between the same size of, of uh, vinegar and different particle sizes of baking soda. Uh, baking soda comes in clumps so you could test whether you know I use the powder of baking soda so you can use it in clumps and see if your reaction time is any faster if it shoots up any further you can even measure how high it goes if it's coming out of, uh, of some kind of a glass or a plastic bottle see how do you think you could slow down the rate of reaction between the materials How about changing of the temperature? We kind of noticed that a lot of times um, 
heat energy will speed up reaction time. And heat energy sometimes is, uh, is the catalyst and sometimes it's one of the reactants itself. But I wonder what would happen if we used warm water with uh, Alka-Seltzer. If you have some extra tablets at home, hmm, maybe you can do that. Let's go to our cross-cutting concepts. Energy and matter. During the chemical change that occurred, what matter was conserved? How could you test this? Well, yes, matter was conserved. What was happening with the little bubbles that you saw there? They were escaping. They were probably coming out of this, you think, maybe? How could we test that? And what we could do is we could mass the amount of water that we have, 100 mil of water, that's 100 grams, and then we could mass our Alka-Seltzer tablets. We could devise a way to catch the, the gas that is escaping after the reaction starts. And then we could mass it all again after it's over. The, the solution that we have down in here, the gas that's in the balloon, of course, we would have to mass a balloon or whatever on the front end so that we would have the same amount of, of mass because you can't just mass just raw air. You gotta collect it in something. So when you're massing your whole tablets, your water, your receptacle, you would also want to mass whatever it is you're gonna catch it in. When you're done with it, you just take the whole thing because the gas will be in here, the liquid solution will be in here, and then you mass it again. And did we conserve mass? Well, according to the law of conservation of mass, we should. So, how could you do this? Well, we could do this with a balloon, or in this case, what I have here. I don't have any balloons available. Rubber glove. Let's see here. I can get this ready. It takes a little bit more time to prepare this thing. And this is very similar to what I showed you in the phenomenon video. So we're gonna do that one more time. Plop that in right here. And let's see what happens. So at standard temperature and pressure, our Alka-Seltzer tablet is a solid. When we're done here, do we have any solid things left out? No, we don't. There's no solid left. That immediately tells you that right here at standard temperature and pressure, we had some kind of a chemical reaction going. This ought to also tell you that something is happening, some kind of a chemical reaction is happening. There is gas being let out of this water and tablet put together. But what is it? Well, I have the answer here, and you're not responsible for this because this is more of high school chemistry. But basically, an Alka-Seltzer tablet is basically just citric acid and sodium bicarbonate put together. It is an acid and a base put together in a little tablet. Now, when you combine that with water, 
when you combine it with water, these are your reactants, the things that are reacting together, your products, and this is not a balanced equation, I didn't have the time to balance it, but this is what the, what the reactants are and what the proper products are. The products are water, both in water vapor and in liquid form, so you're actually creating more water. Uh, carbon dioxide released in gas, right here, and when an acid and a base comes together, they form a salt. And this one is sodium citrate. So there is a sodium citrate water solution down here. We're still not even done reacting. Look, there's still gas bubbles still making their way all the way up to the top. So this glove is still filling with carbon dioxide and a little bit of water vapor, not much. I mentioned earlier that this reaction had something to do with the Mentos and Diet Coke. Well, one of the reasons why that the powder reacts so much faster than the tablet is we created more surface area. Now look at the powder. We have lots of little bitty grains, all with a lot of exposed surface. We look at the tablet and all of, we only have the surface on the outside, on this side, the underside, and around. All of the matter that's inside this tablet is still in there. All this has to dissolve first to get to that. When we have it crushed up into all this powder right here, then it can react quicker the citric acid and the bicarbonate are both included in this solid tablet. When it starts to dissolve, then it can react with each other. So it reacts with each other and then it creates this sodium citrate solution, carbon releases carbon dioxide, and gets our water vapor and our liquid water. So we have more surface area. So that's why it's reacting faster. Same thing happens with Mentos. Mentos, when you look at a little piece of Mentos candy, it's, and you look at it under a microscope, it's not near as smooth as it looks. It's got little holes in it. The surface is kind of looks like a golf ball, only way smaller. And that golf ball, those indentations, creates more surface area, just like the Mentos does, just like our powder does here. So that creates more surface to react with the water. When that happens, it can act quicker. The reaction is much, much faster. So again, our powder reacted a whole lot faster because we had more surface area and the same amount of mass here than we do here. So again, if you have any questions about this experiment or any anything else dealing with chemical reactions, please dojo me the questions or email me the questions. And until next time, wash your hands. <laughs>